very quickly, I'm going to click on the map of Mumbai, uh, which shows you the constituencies of the city. And uh, one of the most popular uh, young MPs in Mumbai is uh, this person called Mr. Milin Devra. What we actually provide you with is immediately once you go into the profile page of the person, is first of all, say tomorrow your, uh, your road gutters are not doing very well, or say there are trees that have been cut which have not been picked up by the municipality. Should Milin Devra be held responsible for what is happening around your area? Perhaps not, right? Because he is an MP. So the first thing to hold your MP accountable is you've got to know what you can hold him accountable for. If you go to his office and say that I'm going to hold you accountable for my local civic problems, he's immediately going to be, and very legitimately, tell you that this is not my job because he shouldn't be focusing on these things. He should be focusing on systemic change. He should be focusing on bringing in funds at a large level to solve the entire drainage crisis of the city and not fix individual potholes. So the first thing that we enable is what are the responsibilities of an MP, which is something which is called the constitutional, uh, there's a thing called the union list, which very crisply says that an MP is responsible for X, Y, Z. Now, none of you all have time to read the Constitution of India, and frankly, even I don't have the time to read the entire Constitution of India. But a certain number of elements are very, very useful on our daily basis. So what this first does is tells you what Mr. Milindevra is responsible for as an MP. Okay, now that I know that he is responsible for X, Y, Z things, I can immediately now go into Mr. Milindevra's profile page and, and Anand, you were commenting that, you know, their phone numbers and their, and their uh, email addresses, first of all, are very basic pieces of information which need to be made available to you in the public domain. The first piece of information which actually shocks people is that Mr. Milindevra actually has a mobile number on which you can actually call him. It gives you his address. In, in many cases, it even gives you his email address. And here's another widget we have. It's called Text Me. Just like you go to justdial.com and you get information about a service provider or a product provider, this is information you can have stored on your mobile so that the next time you encounter a situation where you need to communicate on the spot with Mr. Milindev or you can actually have his mobile number as a contact card sitting on your phone. All right, these are some of the, the, the small features, but the, the essential component just comes down here. Okay. It tells you a little bit about what this person is all about. Uh, a brief synopsis, which actually humanizes Mr. Milindevra for you. A lot of people think that these politicians come from a, a certain other realm of society. They are nobody else but people who are studying in colleges where you studied. They probably have a slightly different career background than what you had. But all of them are real human beings. So the first thing is we do is we give you a sense of the fact that this person, for example, is an educated human being. He is a BBA degree holder from Sydney College. He currently works beyond politics. He is the founder of Sparsh, a social initiative that claims to do X, Y, Z things. Now, this is very essential for elected representatives to know that Mumbai Votes is about explaining who you are to the people, good or bad, not just to denigrate or to disparage the work that you do. It's very important for them to be humanized in the eyes of the people. All right. Now, getting into the actual information that is available, uh, a lot of us spoke about the assets of uh, elected representatives. Now, I don't know if you all know, but all elected representatives in India are allowed to have businesses outside of their public office. In fact, this is something that was considered to be essential so that they don't see the public office as being a way of looting funds from the community through corruption. However, and this is something that we found very interesting, is that you are allowed to have as many assets as you want. But if you look at the growth figures during the time when they were in power, most of the MPs and MLAs and corporators in India have growth rates that far exceed the growth rate of the GDP of the country. So what we are saying is that, you know what, you seem to have a financial model which perhaps needs, needs to be replicated countrywide because Mr. Milind Devra, who is considered to be a very honest, very clean human being, surprisingly his assets grew at 252% between 2005, which is the first time that he got elected, 2004, sorry, and 2009. So while it's not a crime to have as many assets as you want, how are you going to explain a 252% rise while the country was growing at 9%? We would love to know that about what financial model is being followed in your own economy. All right. Now, you see a few buttons over here, which is a questionnaire, a party manifesto, and a video transcript. Now, the concept of a manifesto have any of you guys who voted for the elected representatives that you voted for last time ever read the manifesto of an elected representative? 
So that is actually a promissory note. This is something that he is putting down in black and white saying, I will do X, Y, Z things. And they themselves almost forget that they have put this out in the public domain. Right here, at the click of a button, it first of all gives you a digested version of the party manifesto. Taking out all the fluff and taking you right down to the essential components of the party manifesto. So if you actually look at the booklet, it's a 30, 40 page booklet which they know that you will never read. What we've tried to do is we've tried to get right down to the business end of the document and tell you exactly what they have promised. And you'd be surprised about how specific some of their promises are. They literally give you numbers of kilometers of roads that they will construct, numbers in terms of the, the, the kind of money that they will bring into Narega, into other JNNURM for your city, etc. Very, very simple ways of holding people accountable. But unless we give this information right to you, you will not even know what to hold them accountable for. All right, so that, the first thing that we give you is this party manifesto. The second thing, and perhaps the most important part of this, is the elected representatives are all, irrespective of whether you are a large party MP, a small independent candidate, you are asked the same question during every election cycle and in the intermediary year as to what have you done for your constituency in the last one year and what do you plan to do in the next one year. And here is something that I think you might find really cool is that a lot of politicians, as you might know, love to continue speaking beyond the time given to them. And I hope I don't continue doing this today. Uh, all of them have a tendency to go beyond the time given to them to communicate to the people. So we follow a policy of this. We follow a policy of five minutes given to every elected representative, if they are an MP, to speak about their planned work and what they have promised. And if they do not finish speaking in five minutes, there's actually an alarm bell that goes off and they've been told that the camera will actually be shut off mid-sentence because we feel that fair play is very, very important. One of the features you might have noticed in the last few elections, especially since the terror attack, is civil society representatives coming forward and standing as independent candidates and getting thrashed, ruthlessly thrashed in elections because they do not have the might to compare or to campaign like major party candidates. One thing that Mumbai Votes enables, and we will go to a profile page of an independent candidate who has been given the same platform as Mr. Milindevra has been given, the same amount of time, so that the independent candidate knows that if I get onto this platform and I communicate on the same level playing field, I have a greater chance of getting my word across to the people rather than me having an expensive, elaborate election campaign which then I need to reap the money for when I get elected. So in a way, it levels the playing field amongst elected representatives as well. All right, so very quickly, we will look at... Uh, what you know, we have in terms of the video interview that we recorded from Mr. Milindevra. Now this is available for every elected representative in Mumbai standing. We have a total of 407 video interviews which are a cyclical process. So it's not a one-time video interview, it's every year. And these are people that most people in Mumbai would not even know, but they are the people who control close to 2,000 crores worth of funds every year. These are the councillors of the city who each get 30, 30 lakhs every year to spend on the local constituency. But these people are largely mysterious. They've never been on camera before. They've never been in a newspaper before. They are people who keep making promises, keep breaking them without any public record. So these are cooperators who you otherwise would never have seen in real life. And they are real human beings. They don't need to be mysterious entities. I will quickly take you, uh, because Mr. Uh, Milindevra's profile uh, and his video interview is actually very, very long, I'm going to take you to the profile of the person who I actually voted for in my last election. And this is a person who I otherwise, without Mumbai votes, would not even have known as standing for elections. He would have just been some independent candidate with a weird symbol on, on the, on the uh, polling ballot and I would have never voted for him. So let's quickly just go and search for this gentleman. Uh, his name was Mr. Jayesh Bhayani. He's from this party called the, independent, uh, the Humanist Party of India. Okay, there seems to be an error on this page. Um, okay, uh, since the video isn't loading, uh, we're just going to go on and explore more about the, the politician that we just talked about. Uh, that's, that's the MP. Okay. We can we sort of... Yeah. Sorry? Another few minutes? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, now, 
once the person has been elected, there are a few parameters that we actually assess the person based on. The first is whether there are any pending court cases against this person. Now, to call them criminal records is actually incorrect because none of these people have actually been convicted for any of the offenses. But it is important to know what cases are pending against them. Now, thankfully, this gentleman has no pending court cases. But there are many instances where people have pending court cases. And what we do is we apply a rating system to help you understand how criminal or the tendency for criminality of this person is using a flag rating system. And here is a flag rating system available to you as to what this flag rating system is very quickly. Okay. So, if you go down to the criminal record component of it, all the cases against the person are first classified using the Indian Penal Code and looking at the severity of the punishment that they are liable for if they get convicted using a 1 to 5 red flag rating system. We look at every criminal case or, or every pending court case against them and come up with a composite number of red flags which is a measurable parameter with which you can compare different elected representatives. This is one example. 